Okay, so we've now considered uh, the distributions of a single variable that form the basic building blocks of the theory that we are developing here. However, basically every engineering problem that we are going to encounter will uh, involve multiple parameters, uh, most or at least some of which will have to be treated um, as stochastic variables. So, for example, if you if we're looking at the resistance capacity of a simple reinforced concrete beam, the geometrical properties of the concrete beam itself, uh, the area of the steel, the material properties of the steel and of the concrete, all are likely to have uh, an extent of uncertainty associated with them. In addition, when we model this problem, uh, we make certain assumptions and simplifications that, it, that introduce int uh, additional uncertainty and bias into our um, calculated result. And to account for that effect, we often use a model factor, which in itself is uncertain. Okay, so in developing the theory for multivariate statistics, I'm primarily going to be using the bivariate case, so where you have two variables, x and y. Uh, but the concepts that I'm going to develop here are general, and you can apply them to multiple dimensions. If we consider the probability function of a given variable, and we find that it does not depend on another variable, uh, that pair of variables are said to be independent. Um, if this is not the case, then that pair of variables are said to be correlated. Um, so, so shown um, in the two figures down here are two sets of multivariate sampled points where in the case on the right it was specified that there is no correlation between the two variables x and y. Uh, where in the case on the left, correlation was specified to be present. And you can see the effect of this in that um, high x values are only associated with low y values, and uh, high y values are only associated with low x values. There's a lot more going on here than, uh, th than that simplification, but uh, but the basic idea of a dependence between x and y is illustrated there. Um, now just as in the one-dimensional case we use the probability density function to describe the relative likelihood of our random variable, we can do the same thing uh, for every bivariate pair of random variables. So um, viewing this in three dimensions, if we have uh, on our x and y axes um, our two random variables, we, we can plot the probability density function as a three-dimensional surface uh, where there's very clearly some combinations of x and y that have that have higher likelihood values than, say, others. Uh, now to represent this in two dimensions, what we can do is use contours. So we plot, plot lines as a function of x and y that represent um, combinations of values that have equal likelihood. So you can see that uh, th these areas out here where in our random sampling there the, the points are fairly sparsely distributed to correspond to a, a low contour line, so it's some, somewhere out here, uh, where in the middle here where we have a high density uh, our, our contour lines uh, correspond to high relative likelihood, so that contour line is, is somewhere up there. Now, this representation can be simplified even further by simply showing a, a set of contour lines, as, as I'm doing here. Now, what I'm showing here, here is the multivariate probability distribution function that would result uh, for two random variables that are not normally distributed. In fact, in this case, uh, what's on the x-axis here is log normally distributed, and what's on the y-axis here is gumbel distributed. And you can see the effect of that in the apparent asymmetry in the marginal distributions here. So you can you can see how there's a asymmetry when viewed along the x-axis, and similarly there's an asymmetry in the distribution when viewed along the y-axis. Now to begin with, uh, 
we're going to consider the case where both x and y are normally distributed and on top of that are uncorrelated. This is a very simple and fundamental multivariate description and, and it'll turn out to be very useful for us as we develop the uh, reliability theory. So in the case where our two variables are uncorrelated, we can simply multiply their marginal distribution functions to come up with our multivariate distribution. So what I'm saying is I can take the individual probability distribution functions for each of uh, the random variables, multiply them, uh, and, and that way construct the multivariate distribution function. Uh, notice that just as the area underneath each one of these functions uh, sums up to 1, so the uh, total volume underneath this surface also needs to uh, integrate up to 1. So when we multiply them, what we end up with um, is this simple exponential function where the, the argument is a sum over the, uh, over the standardized values for each of the individual variables. So we have the, the mean and the standard deviation for x and the mean and the standard deviation for y in there. Now using that as our starting point, we can manipulate this into a, a more useful form. So s starting with this original s sum we have here, we can rewrite this uh, using matrix vector notation by defining the variance matrix uh, in this form over here. Keep in mind that in this case we are still looking at uncorrelated variables. Uh, what we also define here is the vector of our random variables and the vector of the corresponding means um, and standard deviations. Writing it in this way we can then take uh, this sum and write it as this matrix vector product. Now an equivalent way of writing that is by defining the uncorrelated standard normal vector of variables which takes this form and then we can write the argument on the previous slide as this simple uh, dot product of vectors. The effect that this has is that it centralizes and normalizes our random variables into standard normal variables so we end up with each of them being, being transformed to an equivalent variable with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So our original contour lines which were ellipses um, now form circles. Now let's consider um, correlation. So correlation is a pairwise measure um, of the dependence between two variables which is basically defined through the, uh, as the, the normalized covariance of the, two of the two variables. So to illustrate the effect of this on the left here we have a random sample of two uh, normally distributed variables that are uncorrelated and in the middle here we have two variables with the same marginal parameter but now there is a negative correlation present between the two variables. An important thing to keep in mind here is that as soon as there is an asymmetry to the marginal distributions your um, correlation coefficient is no longer well defined. Um, so an extreme case here is one, one would clearly agree that there is perfect correlation uh, be, um, between x and y here, in since there is a that there is an almost deterministic uh, relation between the two of them, um, and yet if you were to calculate the the, the uh, correlation coefficient for this, y you will not find a value of negative one. So, okay, so when you do have correlation between two variables, we we define the correlation matrix as a symmetric matrix with the uh, correlation coefficients in, in the off-diagonal entries. And then the, the covariance matrix is given by this, this form over here. You will recall that uh, this, is the, this is the equivalence, now this is the equivalent version of what we had in the uncorrelated case where we had the variance matrix equal to the product of our variance vectors and the identity matrix. In this case the invariate uh, normal distribution function um, takes this form over here. So, so what, I, so what, I'm, what I'm going to do now is manipulate this uh, to get back to a standard normal formulation. So the first thing that we do is we uh, decompose our uh, covariance matrix 
using Kuleski decomposition. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Kuleski decomposition, what, what it essentially amounts to is taking the square root of a matrix. So what we do is we write the correlation matrix as the product of a lower triangular matrix and its transpose. So this is a special case of LU decomposition that is specifically uh, relevant for symmetrical positive definite matrices. Okay, so having done this and substituting this into the argument of the exponential function, we can factor the covariance matrix uh, into the variance vectors and the Kuleski decomposition of the correlation matrix, which then allows us to write this entire product as the product of two uncorrelated standard normal vectors. So having done that, we can now rewrite our, our multivariate probability distribution function as being proportional to an exponential function of this uh, inner product of the uncorrelated standard normal variable vector. And this is the fundamental result that, uh, that, that we've been working towards.